Hey guys, today I'm going to do a tour of my friend Tim's apartment. Now he's an amazing artist. He does different model kits, like the different figurines. He puts them together, he paints them. He does airbrushing and drawings. He airbrushed, he's airbrushed his car. And I just wanted to show you guys the different things that he's done because most of the things he's done are Halloween or spooky or horror movie. His whole apartment is just done up in this like awesome, awesome manner with all these different figurines and paintings and everything. So I just wanted to give you guys a mini tour of everything that he's done and hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Stay tuned. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're here and we're gonna start off on this wall and this is, I don't know what this guy is. This is pumpkin head. Okay. And this is a, I don't know if it's not one one scale, it's like the next size down so it's not life size, but these were made by a company called Little Monsters. And because they like my artwork and how I work in paint kits, because I do professional build-ups, they gave me this one, which is number three. Number one they kept, number two went to the studio that made the movie, and I got number three. So, this was a kit, the, the mouth, the teeth, the tongue, and the eyes are all separate pieces. The backboard, he's not really many pieces, but it's, it's just a lot of work to clean and put together. So there's no seam, you can see like along here, along here. No seam inside the mouth, no seam here. The eyes are glass. I left them, they're supposed to be like a milky whitish yellow, but I did them white with veins that I hand painted on the inside so that I could put, there's a light in it, but it doesn't work right now. So the eyes light up like a, I put red LED so they give it that reddish white glow. That's why I left them that way. Most people paint it the yellow, murky color. Is Lon Chaney, Man of a Thousand Faces. This kit, it's a ton of pieces. The stool is about 10 pieces. His legs, body, arms, and head are all separate. The bearer, these guys are all separate pieces. The pedestals, they only give you the top piece. You have to buy your own dowels and cut whatever length you want to make the tubes. The makeup kit is like in three, four pieces. Then you got to paint every little piece of makeup in it so that it looks, you know, like real makeup case. This little glass jar I got from a dollhouse store because I wanted to add some more stuff to it other than what they gave you. And then they give you these little black and white photos from the movies he's been in to cut up and lay all over the base. Now, what is Lon Chaney? I don't, I don't know what that is. He's um, one of the founders back in the day, like Frankenstein, Dracula, the mummy, Wolfman. He's the one, he did his own makeup, so he did, this is him as Hunchback of Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. This is him as Phantom of the Opera. This is him as London After Midnight. And this is just him putting makeup on, but he's... Done that, like most of those characters. Boris Karloff did Frankenstein and Lon, uh, Lon Chaney, what's his name? Um, Bella Lugosi did the original Dracula, but he's like one of the main ones from back in the, what, 50s? Wolfman, right? I don't know if Lon Chaney did Wolfman, he might have. But these are like his characters that he does. Okay. And these are obviously, these are airbrush t shirts that I do too. All Who's freehand. that? This is from a game. I don't know the name of the game. It was just I thought it was a cool looking character. This arm um, wasn't in the picture because the game was cut like this, like a square, you know, for the box eye. But I decided to finish him. And that's Predator. And all the way over there is Lady Death. Well, that's a comic book? Yeah, it's a comic book from Evil Ernie. She's like, she's a character, Lady Death, like she's actually a deaf person. She brings evil Ernie to life when he's dead, and then they go on and be chaos. And who's this? This is Pumpkin. Um, oh, Pennywise. It, it, Pennywise right? with it. And that's yeah. airbrush? Yeah, it's all airbrushed. Freehand, no stencils. I built and sold, so I don't have it here. That's called guillotine. She cuts people's heads off with that axe. She actually cut her own head off, and they sewed it back on. You can see it. And that over here is Nuno from Extreme. Spawn, that's Alien, and that's, you know, Elvira, obviously. Oh, Elvira. yeah, hold on, let's go over here, my favorite. Everyone always said, where's her boobs? Because they want to see Elvira, but I just wanted to get a nice picture of her face with the detail in her eyes. And it's an older picture of Elvira because he, she does her makeup different now. Now that she's older, I guess she does, like... The purples, like these purples here, are more dark and they go all the way up on her forehead now. Yeah, the purple and blue. Because I actually have pictures of her with her hair up, you know, where you can see. And she doesn't yeah. do it that far up back in the day, but now she does it differently. I don't know why. Oh, these in the hallway? Yeah, he's old. This is 
when I was in high school. This, this is from 80, 81 or 80. These are projects from school. This is Eddie Van Halen done in just pencil. That's just some base gillip that I made up some guy. The one below is Spawn. That's oh, a, you made this one up? Yeah, this is from school. You can see the date on it. I think that's, what is that? This is 81. That's a, just a, the execution of bass player. That was before Gene Siemens even had that bass axe that looks like that. This is that's Spawn. Spawn from a comic book. This is, this is just something that I made up. I was in a school back in the 90s. They asked me to come in and do a demonstration with my airbrushes, so I just made that up. And then pinhead in the bathroom. <laughs> a very, very welcoming picture for the bathroom door. <laughs> come on in and get your shit scared out of you. This is my favorite, probably. The gremlin. Um, I don't want to spin him too much while hitting his ears. He's a, he consists of, his hand is two pieces, the fingers and the thumb, the wrist. There's another piece here, this goes into the shoulder, so there's all those pieces. The legs are one piece, this bottom foot, the cut here, that's another piece. The head is, comes off here, and the ears are separate pieces. So I had the, he's made out of vinyl, not resin, which he's hollow, so I had to fill him with cement. But he was a pain in the ass, everything's all freehand painted, all done with airbrush. When I had him nice and balanced here, he was complete. He fell off onto the floor. <laughs> he jumped. <laughs> and um, his arms snapped in places that weren't, you know, that didn't have seams. His legs broke off. And then I glued him back together, repainted and fixed all the seams, put him in the bathroom, leaned his face against the mirror so he wouldn't fall. And he slid off the bathroom counter, bounced off the counter, <laughs> off the toilet onto the floor and broke again in more pieces. So I had to refix them again, and then I, his feet are filled with cement. So I drilled up into his feet and put studs, and I screwed him into the wooden base so he ain't falling anymore. He's good. And this is his permanent home on the kitchen stove. <laughs> He's actually a life-size one. <clears throat> this is how big they were in the movie. This, this is the actual size. He's like probably like two feet tall. But I decided to make my own color scheme because if you watch the second movie, all those gremlins, there's so many of them. There's so many of them. There could be any number of colors, different ways they're made. Everyone says, is this one Spike? Spike has the spikes on his back. They actually had spikes you could get for him, but I didn't get the spikes with this one. I just wanted a regular gremlin I could paint any way I wanted. These are model kits I build. I have, I've done over probably eight to 10,000 kits in the years that I've been doing this professionally. For people, these are ones I've done for myself and had on tables for sale at the Chiller Theater Show. This one is called He's Devil Man, and that's Celine. They're actually Japanese comic book characters. They're together in this one. I guess Devil Man is biting her, and she's turning into a creature because of his venom. I don't know the gist of that story, but I thought the kit was cool. This one is Asuka and Sinji. Don't know the character. I just thought the kit was neat looking. When I was cleaning her flower, it was like a bunch of little pieces they broke, and I lost half of them, so I made that from scratch. The headphone wires they don't give you to go to the little radio, so I pulled apart a phone wire, took the two wires, you know, the one, there's four wires in a phone wire, I took one out and just used that for his headphones. This is a kit by Coop, um, it's called Trick or Treat, it's from a sticker, I can get the sticker if you want to see it. This is the Coop sticker, and Bossum sculpted that kit. The pumpkins don't come with the stems. I made all the stems. He doesn't have a chain to give you. I made the chain from a necklace. And the wire to the pumpkin is also a wire from the phone. The phone wire comes in handy because it's thin. This little kit here is Frankenstein. And that's his, the doctor. That's just a little plastic kit I thought was cool. This is a David Bowie from This Labyrinth. is my favorite one. Goblin can kit. The hair underneath the little creature standing sitting in the back, I cut fur off of a stuffed animal for hair. His hair that they give you in the kit doesn't look good. So that's from a wig that I cut. You gotta cut each strand, glue it on in layers, and then cut the hair to look like that. I could probably cut it thinner and make it to make it look more. I think that's good the way it looks, and I ain't gonna mess with that anymore because then it'll probably look like hell. This is just a Frankenstein bust. An artist version of what he thought Frankenstein was cool. I thought that was a neat looking kit, so I got an actual full version of him, you'll see. This is 
evil Ernie from the Lady Death that turns him into that. That's just, I thought was a cool comic book kit. Down on the next shelf, this is just a witch on a pumpkin, which I hollowed out the pumpkin and put a flickering candle in it so that it looks like it lit up pumpkin. I thought it would be cool. This is just an anime witch kit that I thought was neat. You didn't, just did this one recently, just right? Just did this one recently. It didn't come with the base. The broom broke into two pieces. It's very brittle. So I couldn't figure out how to get it to work where she's going to sit on it and balance on that stick. So I bought a knitting needle the right size and cut the end off and just painted that so just, that way I could use a piece of metal. That's all done for just how I thought it was a cool looking kit. The one behind her is a very rare Vampirella kit. It's cool cast porcelain. It's a it's like resin, but it's more like a china feel to it. I thought that was a that's a rare kit, so I built that a long time ago. This is just a vampire kit some guy designed, his idea of a vampire. This I just did recently too. It's a Lon London After Midnight little big head. What they mean by that is you can see his head would be the size of a kit that would be about 18 inches tall, but then they make a miniaturized body, right. so they call them little big heads, but I had some fun painting him. The girl in the back is a vampire slayer. Even though she's got vampire wings and can fly, but she goes after bad vampires, I believe. It's just a kit some guy made up. The little vampire girl. The, oh, the girl right here? Right there. That's from a, a video game. I forget. Darkstalkers, I believe. I thought she was neat looking, so I bought that kit to build it. The one behind is just a jester kit. When you pull the face off, it looks like a skeleton. Just made by someone. And down in front, the last two on this shelf is the Grinch, obviously. And a little Japanese anime... Dracula kit comes with a little coffin and a bat. It goes along with that Frankenstein kit that we showed earlier. Then we go over here. Oh God. The one behind, everyone says, is that a wrestler? It's like, no, that's the crow. <laughs> this is um, the tall man from Phantasm. I just finished him. The ball that they give you with it, I didn't like. You could, it's hard to paint chrome, so I painted the inside of a crystal ball so you can see it. And I made these out of mylar, so they're mirrored finish rather than using the plastic ones that didn't look like metal. This is just a uh, Soriyama. He's an artist. They made a kit from his, they made lots of kits from his um, paintings. This is one of them. I don't know what it is. It's just a kit that I made for a customer. I thought they'd want it, but I haven't been to a show, so it's sitting on my shelf. This is another anime kit. Seems like the guys at the shows like to buy little kits with big boobs. So <laughs> that's what that was built for, but I haven't done the shows in a while. Behind is She-Hulk. This is another rare kit, Vampirella. The story behind this kit's really cool. This guy was at the show, a Japanese guy walking around. He sculpted this. He was selling it. And at the show that week, the people that do Vampirella happened to be there. And they grabbed him and said, cease and desist. He's not allowed to sell without permission. And then their kit that was there was terrible looking. Everyone's like, why don't you let him sell? So now you can buy it as a statue. But I, I have the original kit that I had to build and paint. She's a lot of, these, all these kits are lots of pieces. That's another Soriyama paint, um, painting kit they made the kit from. This is a samurai girl or a sword girl. Gene Simmons from Kiss, another kit that a long time ago me and a partner came out with. Hired a guy to sculpt all four of them. When you put the bases together, it makes a Destroyer album cover. I haven't built the rest of them. That's not a kit. That's another. This is a pumpkin head. Um, this is Geometrics design. This is on the original came out on a wooden burnt out church base like the movie. Up here is Pumpkin Head. When they reissued it, they did it again on a different base, so I bought them both, just so I'd have the two different bases. This is Arnold Schwarzenegger from Terminator. His eye lights up, I put a little LED in there. This is that Frankenstein version we saw the bust of, the guy who had a whole body version of it. This is just from... Uh, Corpse Bride? Uh, Corpse Bride, it's not a kit. But it keeps falling off the base, so you have to be glued. The one back is just an anime girl. I had to put the string, make strings for a bikini because they don't come with that. It would look kind of funny without the strings. This is that vampire kit from Darkstock. is a bigger version. That's just a gorilla. Not anything, everyone says, is that from a movie. It's not King Kong. It's just regular, just a gorilla, silverback. And way up there is just another anime girl. An old 1960s Mad Magazine. Oh yeah, I remember kit. that. And that's um, the Grodies. They, those are plastic kits that came out in the 50s and 60s. That's 
like the beat neck and the girl grabbing onto his leg like the Beatles kind of thing. Then another painting of Van Perlo I did on a t-shirt, airbrushed. And then over here in the mess, up there <laughs> is a Terminator I built. I had been waiting, maybe digging him apart, put a light in his eye, and all, all the rest of the stuff I did. Well, actually I made her. <laughs> He's a little witch that blows bubbles. Everyone, it's one of those ceramic class ones, but I didn't go to class. I just wanted to buy the kit and airbrush it myself rather than do it the way they do it. And this is where I work on kits. That's a Cowboy Bebop kit that was I found I had started for a customer, and now I got to find the fucking guy still around. And this is um, another kit. This is what they look like. They're not plastic; they're resin, but they. They are in a ton of pieces. Oh, yeah. And that's how they start. How about this one? That is a Wolfman kit by a guy called, his name, his name is, I guess, his last name must be Newman, but he calls us up the Newmanoid, I believe. These were, these are like a porcelain. The, the tree is split down the middle here. So it's one, two, the arms, three, four, the legs, five, and six. So those are all the pieces. And then there was only a limited number of these. And I got number 161 or 250. That weighs a ton. It's a heavy one. It's like a porcelain type material, so it's heavier than normal. It's solid. And then you painted that, right? The That's drum. a drum cover for my band. That's my band logo I designed. I have like six of those. Those are 22s. I have 24s in boxes for when I have a drum with 24 inch covers. But when the drum is gone, I take the drum heads because they're mine. All right, I think that's I think it, that's right? about everything in here. Cool. See, like total Halloween horror movie type stuff. 24-7 <laughs> Halloween here. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't take any of this stuff down. I just add to it. So that's it for the tour of all of Tim's artwork and model kits and everything he's done. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment below and then I can always ask him um, the questions for you and get a response if you're interested in learning anything more on the art and kits that he's done. So thank you guys for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!